Hello and welcome to Kathy's Eclectic Garden. I'm Kathy and I garden in Zone 6A in Northwest Ohio. During the next few weeks I will be talking about plants that you should consider adding to your 2024 garden to attract pollinators. Your flowering plants and vegetables benefit from the pollinators in your garden. In fact, without pollinators your plants would not produce any fruits or vegetables. In other words, these plants are good choices to add to your garden if they grow well in your hardiness zone. So let's dive in. Today's pollinator plant is native to Europe and it sure does attract the pollinators. Let's take a look at sea holly, Eryngium planum. Sea holly is hardy in zones 4 to 8. It's deer and rabbit resistant and drought tolerant. This low maintenance plant grows from dark green basil leaves. In late February this year, it's already starting to show signs of new growth. I hope we don't get a hard freeze. Sea holly isn't picky about soil type, but it does not like wet feet. So plant it in well-draining soil and full sun. In partial sun, the plants will start to flop over. I winter sowed my sea holly in a plastic container. If you start from seed indoors, be sure to use a deep container at least 3 to 5 inches. They have deep tap roots, which makes them hard to move. So choose their location carefully. Sea holly is a fast-growing plant. And in early May of 2023, this was the basil plant and it was getting quite large. Here is a close-up of the purple stems and serrated leaves. It doesn't require any fertilizer. In fact, they prefer poor soil and fertile soil can make the plant sprawl. By the end of May, you can see how much they've grown. They have started to produce flower stems which will reach two to three feet tall. I made the mistake of planting my sea holly next to the main path in my garden. Don't do that. I put up a short fence last year to keep it back off the path and this year the fence will be taller because the short fence just wasn't enough. It must like it's home here. The first week of June and it was already at least four feet tall. Around it, I've got planted non-invasive white gooseneck loose strife to the left and Walker's Low Cat Mints blooming right behind it and Sneezeweed, which has bright yellow flowers, is off to the right. By mid-June, the flower buds are starting to appear. They will become stunning purple-blue thistle-like flowers. The flowers have a metallic sheen that glistens in the sunlight. In my garden, sea holly was in bloom well into August. Here is a full view of the plants in mid-June. Sea holly can be planted individually or in small groups. There are three plants growing here and three more plants growing across the path. They will self-seed, however, this will be the fourth year for mine and I haven't noticed them self-seeding or spreading anywhere else in my garden. The variety I planted is called Steel Blue and it is a flat sea holly species. Another species I have in my garden is Rattlesnake Master which is native to North America, but more on that in another video. Other species that have been cultivated as garden plants will be listed in the description below. You can see in this video why I recommend this for pollinators. Just look at all of the little tiny pollinator insects swarming this plant. It's also visited by bumblebees and butterflies. Here it is in mid-July and the colors beginning to fade. Sea holly is a good cup flower and also makes a good dried flower. It works well in a cottage garden, pollinator garden, rock garden, cutting garden, butterfly garden, just to name a few. Here you can see a close-up of the leaves and how the individual flower stems branch at the top of the main flower stem. I've not had any pest or disease issues with any of my sea holly plants. This is an early morning video of my sea holly in late July before the bees have come out. In my research of this plant, some people mention that they notice a foul odor from sea holly, but I haven't noticed any odor from the variety I'm growing. By mid-August, the flowers were turning brown and beginning to dry up. I may have gotten a few more flowers if I'd been deadheading my plants, but I don't really deadhead a lot of stuff. And I may try that this year and see if I can get more flowers, but I usually like to leave the dried flowers for the birds to feed on in the winter. While I do like to leave the dead seed heads for the birds, I do cut a few back to about 12 to 18 inches. The stems are hollow and bees and other insects will use them to overwinter. 
planting. I hope you learned about a new plant today and will consider planting some sea holly in your garden. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.